before game number three. Ah, SKT we need to get with the, the prep respect <laughs> bands towards Yellow Star. Those are definitely necessary. Uh, the Nautilus he had so much success on in the group stages, and this Annie last game, tremendous, multiple four and five man stunts to Beautiful set tips. up the equalizers. You got to take away one of these parts because Hooney's equalizers, if you have anything to set them up, just devastating. So LeBlanc will actually be banned by Fnatic this game. So they're taking a different approach here in game three to what we've seen them play in our first couple of matches. Interesting. Hecram still on the board and Callista both still on the board. And Fnatic Michael also really high priority on Urgot as well. And there's the Urgot ban actually by SKT. I think they want to first pick the Rek'Sai again, more than likely, or unless the Callista is up. Exactly. If you give them Callista, then that's crazy. Okay. <laughs> Not that crazy. So where does Fnatic go from here? Hecram seems like a really good choice uh, for Huni. Yes, his Rumble is amazing. Um, but Hecram has been the go-to. I mean, let's talk about the Rumble for a little bit more. I mean, landing amazing Rumble Ultimates is hard in itself, but landing them under duress in a two versus one situation. Yeah, I haven't <laughs> seen anyone do that before. 30 seconds left on the clock. A lot of discussion in Fnatic's camp. Yellowstar does play Thresh and with the support bans. Maybe they don't have to early. Him? Yeah, maybe they don't have to early pick top lane. Uh, they can't take the Sivir here. That's what they did in the first ah. game of this series. Again, we've talked about the limitations of the champion pool for Steelback, so I think they're just going to grab that early, have him on that comfort pick, and they really rely on that initiation. And SK Telecom, what's interesting to me is that they've gone away. They're shying away from the top lane bans. No Hecarim ban this game. Instead, they're taking away the hard CC in the bottom lane for Fnatic. And in a way, playing Thresh right here for Fnatic or picking it instead of the Gragas early is probably the better call because they rely on that crowd control to make Huni's teleports work in the bottom lane. And I like that strategy because both of these top laners has shown that they're well versed in all of the powerful top lane champions right now. And if you don't fully commit to that strategy, there's no point in only throwing a couple of bands to that lane. Faker's Azir locked in very quickly, though. And will we see the Thresh here? Uh, because otherwise these bands don't make a whole lot of sense, I don't think, from SKT, but they may just go for the Lucian now instead. Hmm. And the Azir, very interesting, of course. Easy and I think, maybe the better Azir player on this team. No Nunu. No Lulu. Interesting. I wonder what they're going to go with for for their top lane. And are they going to have a Maokai for a, te a team fight set up here? They've got pretty good poke and pretty good disengage now. SK Telecom leaving their duo lane to last pick. Both teams running this clock down. You can feel the tension as we get into game number three. Monty, you talked about the Sivir pick previously. Febbin with arguably a little bit of a bait on <laughs> the RE. <laughs> Where does Fnatic prioritize? Do they look at the support to deny the Thresh from Wolf? Get some of that CC for Hooney Ganks? I feel like a hard CC initiation support is of a fairly high priority for yes. Fnatic to lock in right now. The other thing is that Fibivin has taken these matchups with Faker on fairly equal footing, taking these skill matchups. I'd like to see Cassiopeia. It's actually a really close matchup with Azir. Cassiopeia actually can out damage Azir in the one versus one early on, pure DPS. And it was banned in both previous games. That's right. It well, now this is obviously going to be a Huni Cassiopeia if they lock it in with Zed. Wow. OK. All right. So we get a very interesting matchup in the top lane. But this Rek'Sai a bit of a threat. And the kill pressure on Cassiopeia in top is going to be quite big, uh, especially I mean, if we see the Rek'Sai plus the Twisted Advance coming in. Yeah, this, you're taking the Cassiopeia top lane into a Rek'Sai jungle, into a Maokai that can set up ganks like no other. This is a very, very scary situation. Maybe they go for a lane swap. They try and get Steelback away from the two versus two. They try and get, you know, Cassiopeia into uh, an easier farming lane. Yeah, but the problem with Cassiopeia, even in a lane swap, is how easy it is to dive under the turret, right? Very if true. Bard and Rek'Sai show up, if, if Cassiopeia is sitting under the turret. And Cassiopeia doesn't have any other options. Cassiopeia can't really go do the jungle uh, that that well, so. Scary, scary stuff. The top lane Cassiopeia worked against Team Solo mid in the very first game 
of the mid-season invitational for Huni. We do see the duo lane locked in for SKT. Disengaging tankiness from the Alistair as well as AD carry Ezreal for Bang. So they're going for a lot of poke with this composition. They want to be able to siege turrets, and they've got a huge, huge front line as well. It's going to be very difficult for Fnatic to crack SK Telecom's composition in the late game. They are going to be the ones going for picks and split pushing. This is so, so similar to game one SK Telecom team composition. And this is Fnatic not being afraid to take a risk. It's very, very daunting to run this fragile of a composition into a team like SK Telecom that have such a beefy front line here, especially with the Alistar also locked in in conjunction with the Maokai. And Azir also has great protection for Ezreal. This is going to be a very strong late game front line here for SKT. And there is the Leona. All right, picks it is. Full pick composition, really, from Fnatic. Yep. Uh, they need to set that up. For Vivid's going to have to get that early lead to see if he can make some split pushing happen right here. But the Ezreal coming in for Bang, it is still occasionally used as an AD carry in Korea. We do see it from time to time, and we have seen it this season. But look how conservatively they're playing. It's going to be really difficult to dive, to turret dive that particular duo combo. They just want to play safe. And I think that's what, if, I'm pretty sure Koma came up to them during that break. <laughs> they're like, just calm down, guys. Take, take a breather. Don't fall behind in the early game. We'll pick a scaling composition, play as conservative, conservatively as possible, take away some of Yellow Star's hard engage, and we'll see what we can do. And the thing about that is the AD Ezreal takes a bit longer than the mid Ezreal to get to that point where you can make the move. So they really do have to take the early stages cautiously. I'll find out whether or not SKT can make it work. It did in game one, convincingly so in game one. Absolute control from the moment the match played out. Yellow Star will be looking to land those solar flares on a champion that, truthfully, he made his support name on yeah. a few years ago. Game three of this best of five head-to-head -head is one-to-one. -one. You know the hashtags by now. There's the team comps on your screen. For Fnatic, go big or go home. That yeah. is their play style, and they are sticking to their guns. SKT, I'm looking for solid play from Fnatic. I'm looking for exquisite skill shot accuracy. I, if Rainover can get some really, really good Gragas ultimates, then that can open up op uh, opportunities for them. But they really have to execute this with a lot of precision. And, and you know, moving forward, too, uh, in this tournament, the conservative style, I think, is how you have to go because we have so many aggressive teams right now. You just want to wait for the right time to strike and take that high percentage play instead of just scrapping it out all over the map. If you can do that, Fnatic has a little bit of a different philosophy, I think, but see what they can do right here. Huni <laughs> going to be chased away by a sapling. No sapling start yet for this Maokai and no indication quite yet of a lane swap. A fan out start from everybody, matching their opposite numbers. No deep wards yet either, Kobe. All right, so we mentioned the dangers of a Cassiopeia top. However, if she gets a lead on Maokai, the range versus melee matchup is so punishing with her because once she lands the first tick of poison, she can go for a kill. Yeah, obviously quite dangerous there. Although in this particular comp too, there's there's almost no way. When we think about Cassiopeia, we typically think of this big 5v5 uh, team fighting champion, but with uh, not too much of a front line right here, it'll be difficult yeah. to actually pull off in a 5v5. The strategy here is, whoa. Nice. Yellow Star is able to interrupt the early uh, experience advantage for Faker, but he took a huge chunk while doing it as well. And lane swap, probably not going to hurt him too much. Yeah, so lane swap will be coming in right here, not wanting the 1v1 for Huni, but that's going to make it pretty difficult for Huni to farm. A little bit delay right there, and we will see Wolf helping out at the blue buff. Yeah, both junglers. Ah. Okay. Give it to Marin. So they're going to do that. So Marin, uh, we see this especially on Maokai and Korea. And if we hearken back to uh, actually IEM, uh, we saw the GE Tigers do this up against um, up against SK. Just give the blue buff over to Maokai early, farm from range, and try and get some sort of lane swap advantage. Uh, I'm going to go all the way back to 2011. CLG did that when Hotshot was Cho'Gath. Uh, <laughs> that was one of our 
earliest lane swap <laughs> moves was to give a level one blue buff to Hotshot. <laughs> And he sustained because nobody had ever seen a one versus two. <laughs> History lessons at the mid-season <laughs> Invitational, ladies and gentlemen. We did see Rainover invading on the strongest side of the map for Fnatic to steal away SKT's red. We'll see whether or not Yellow Star's Leona can look to help out Hooney's Cassiopeia. That's a uh, level one snake. Tower dives, you say, Monty? Yeah, I'm a bit concerned. Yellowstar is going to sneak in to... Oh, can he get actually under the turret? Oh, he used his stun to kill the ward. He m Will the cooldown be back up for this tower dive? Maybe the presence will be enough to scare them off. Yeah, so he Yellowstar... He hard on execute. Yellowstar really getting there in the nick of time. Nice map movement. As soon as the wave hits the tower, he allows Huni to clear out, get that experience. Takes a couple of mystic shots, but no real threat right there as SK Telecom look to close in. So Bengi looking to punish the immobile champion of Cassiopeia and Fnatic reading that, anticipating it, and letting Yellowstar roam up. Yeah, it's just good lane swap play. I'll give you that one. Let me pause for a second, give a little rant though. Calling champions immobile right now, so people... Are, oh, here we go! Well, we'll get to that in a second. Bang, does get caught out with the stun. And Huni continues to chase. Professor Kobe, it's just, me. It's just a little pet peeve I have because people <laughs> use it so much. Immobility is an absolute term. There are not varying degrees <laughs> of immobility. If you're going to call them you know, a low mobility champion, she okay. can still slither okay. around. All right, touche. <laughs> the low mobility champion. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I At least we can that. still use immobile on uh, Galio. Galio and Zareth. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you free passes for those two during their ultimates. The last time I heard that style rant was the rotation versus translation <laughs> debacle. That was a fun one. Of world's well, luster, I believe it was. So. <laughs> Anyways, let's Kobe's get back still to serious business. Rainover is going to land the big belly on Faker. Faker's going to get away. And that's Bevervan going forward. He's taking some Sand Soldier poke in the Ignite. Will not get the kill. But Febivin really, really playing aggressive into Faker. We actually didn't even touch on the fact that Febivin keeps trying to take Assassins into Faker. And Faker keeps going Barrier. Uh, you know, trying to play that aggressiveness and call Bengi over for moves. Right now he's at the bottom lane, though. Right, they want this kill. Spell shield will be available. Bengi trying. Actually going to get an angle here. Steelback playing pretty close to that wall that Rek'Sai can just tunnel through, but... How greedy is Steelback, though? Very. <laughs> All right, just checking. I've, <laughs> I've seen this happen many times before, Kobe. But Bengi does recall, so the wow. threat gets reduced. After Marin just got the pel uh, spell shield off, too. So Bengi with a lot of time spent looking for ganks in top and bottom lane, but not finding anything. Rainover, on the other hand, his first showing does manage to get the barrier. So different priorities for the different junglers. And we need to keep track of those CS numbers. Huni marginally behind Marin. However, bang, 10 CS up over Steelback. Yeah, that wave pushing into the turret too for Maokai right now, so he should be able to get some more farm bang. Starting to zone out now that Wolf is back in the river. Wolf went on a little warding mission into the jungle. Here's them calling Bangy to try and prey on the Vivian's carnivorous tendencies. Uh, we need to take a look at the setup in the top lane. TP's going to be available for Marin in a second or two. Not available for Hooney, but he's luckily in yeah. range. And let's start gets head butted oh, down but the river. Baker and Bengi are coming up. Looks like they are going to back off. Not finding a play right there. They were hoping Fnatic might commit to the 2v2. Yeah, really good communication there for Fnatic. Forbidden alerting the top lane. They had to play really defensively. Well, that's a flash for Marin again. Rainover with an early game impact on Gragas. Same jungler that he had a great impact on against Team Solo mid in a similar gank pattern. Gank oh, mid, then bold. gank top. They're going for the tower dive. Marin's six, though. Steelback does have on the hunt. He used that a moment or two ago. It was first blood to Marin. Steelback's going to take a turret hit, and that was hard. Yeah, Valkai had just hit six, so had his ultimate for the damage reduction right there. A little bit of a weird attempt and a very dangerous one at that into a 
2v1 tower dive with no Grog Assault. Plus, you're doing it while the teleport's up for Maokai, so he can teleport back to the lane and pick up a most of the minions that are... Oh, or he can teleport top. top! Yellow Star gets interrupted, gets hit, butted back with Hootie, does not have access to that petrifying gaze, and he's just been exhausted. Yellow Star's looking for the flash. Flash, flash. He should be able to get away, and that's a teleport trade for an Ignite. Questionable teleport there. They're they did lose the entire wave then, so he wasn't able to go back and clean up that minion wave. Gonna have to walk all the way back down to the bottom lane. So, Same as Steelback, and he's coming back with a BF sword. Questionable play from Rain over in the bottom lane, well, but now Hootie's in trouble. He instantly flashes and bang lands the true shot barrage. That's a kill for SKT. Well, Marin's that, patience pays off. That was actually very deceptive. So what happened there, Marin comes into this lane with a catalyst, and he he's they're starting to think about lane swapping right now. Now the question is, is Fnatic going to make a dragon play? But considering that Fabivin, Fabivin just went back, it may not be possible. So they thought that they were going to swap the duo lane back into the bottom side, and just that patience right there paying off. But can they get a dragon off of it? Uh, looks like they probably will be able they, to, they actually. They definitely should be able to. I don't see any way SKT can contest that. Uh, with Bivin at full HP in the mid lane, uh, Faker's very vulnerable. Cannot venture into the river by himself as Azir. Uh, Dragon secured by Fnatic. Tower defended in the top lane as well. Bivin's going nice to steal. steal the little Raptor away. Small CS advantage, and every time we look middle, he is trying to poke out Faker. So, difficulty to kill though. Yeah, Matamune going to be the first item here. A little bit late on that tier bang, never recalled previously up in that top side, so see how fast he can stack that one up, but the kill will be doing him a few favors at the very least, and see how Marin can do up against Huni with that first blood gold. Yeah, so 500 costs for the dragon, basically. Or actually, no, the first the first blood gold didn't even come from that. That was the dive choice. Terrible one at that. Steel back, 10 CS down. He will be meeting head-to-head -head with Bang's Ezreal. Does have a small experience advantage. Not too much to speak of. We do see that both Wolf and Yellowstar making their way to lane, but Yellowstar will be there first. He is also down on levels against Wolf. The rain over. Another invade. Both of these junglers spent a lot of time in their opponent's jungle. Yeah, the thing here is that Rainover's got the early Sightstone, though. So on his early visits into the jungle, he can deposit a bunch of deep wards. Whereas Rek'Sai, still not back to base in time to buy her Sight wards, or her Sight Stone. So the visits into the jungle, not as fruitful. And there's the death mark coming in. And will it be enough? The pop and the ignites! Bebevin, but that one underwater. the vivid and the barrier just not quite enough to save Baker. Now they're going on to Wolf. Wolf gets oh. melted by the support jungle combo. Here comes Steelback, SKT in retreat. Wolf knocks Yellowstar away and it's Steelback that gets a kill. Fnatic pick up a string of kills across the map. The full pick team, they immediately, they waited like 30 seconds between getting their deep vision down and making picks in the red side jungle. Yeah, that's exactly what they want to do. And SK Telecom, we saw Wolf looking at Gragas in the jungle. He knew that was warded up, and yet they walked into a very dangerous area, get picked off by the Sivir ult. So good play by Fnatic, but they can't, SK Telecom cannot walk into those jungles under those conditions. Bangi must have a large amount of gold because he still hasn't gone back to purchase with Rek'Sai. He's actually going to be going for just a pink ward and the Cinder. So no sign mm. of that sight ward quite yet. Cinder Hulk definitely going to speed up the clear for the jungle. But the lack of vision, they, they've already paid the cost for it. We'll see if Fnatic can keep it up. Their team composition is so heavily built around starting the engages and getting the damage on the right targets. If Marin's ever tanky enough to have a front line with Bengi, Faker and Bang have a lot of range. Right. It, again, it's a similar story to our first game. SK Telecom, they're trying to play it safe. Uh, avoid these picks, avoid these skirmishes and speed plays that Fnatic are going for. Try and wait to the point where they build up their front line and they can have those consolidated battle lines for the fight. And not only that, but that... Oh, wow, Faker actually going in onto Fabivin. And that's a shadow into the flash. Faker manages to get that summoner spell with the threat of Bengi as well. 
and getting to setting up the siege as well, because it's going to be really difficult for Fnatic to actually control any kind of situation if there is a five versus five siege going on. They have Cassiopeia as well as Sivir and Zed for wave clear. Gragas is also a pretty good wave clear jungler. Let's see if it's gonna pay off. Yellowstar has just hit six, and he has a penchant for going aggressive. Wolf still does not have Five. access. He's not got his ultimate and steal back. Flashes forward. The next order attack secures it. Here comes a teleport from Marin. Hoonies is a couple seconds later. Cancelled from Marin. Cancelled from Hooney. And the top laners decide to stay put where they are. Oh, here comes Rain over. Bang able to mystic. Dash as well away. Oh, I completely forgot the name spell of the name of the spell. <laughs> Something I'm actually okay, shift. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually disappointed. Quick shot. You're you're the one known for ability names, right? You know when you just you have it on the tip of your tongue and then it just poof disappears. All right. Well, uh, an interaction that I was actually looking for in the top lane during those teleport channels. If Huni's close enough, the petri a free petrifying gaze onto Marin channeling teleport could be disastrous for him. So he has to be very careful with where he starts channeling his teleport. And there's a turret going over to Fnatic. That'll increase their gold lead to a very healthy two and a half k. Dragon's going to be coming up soon. Looks like SKT. Might want to take a crack at it, but it is going to be pretty difficult. We'll see what SKT do decide. 2,000 gold down again against an aggressive pick-making team. Faker eats two shurikens. The knockup is interrupted as Febivin materializes. Ignite Ooh. plus one more. That is two 1v1s in a game. Febivin is uh, studying from the porn style of a mid lane play. <laughs> Get a solo cam on Fabivin right now. That man. Oh. Wow, Marin and Huni going toe to toe, but there's backup here for Bengi. Petrifying Gaze available. Let's see. That's a two man stun. Huni's turning the poison over to uh. the Queen of the Xersai. Flash has been used. Gonna try to get that movement speed as much as possible. It's not gonna be enough. SKT will get themselves another kill. They invested a lot. What can Fnatic take in reply? SKT still playing from behind. Now, Dragon up in 10 seconds. Our Wolf trying to hold on to this big lane now. turret. And he's going to have to pop his ultimate. Looks like he may be able to delay long enough. And Huni doesn't have the TP. So SKT can get... Or, uh, Tag them. That's it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't do that much damage. <laughs> Getting excited, Kobe. <laughs> so let's take some. Hey, man, two shot barrages. They don't just come from Faker. Let's take a step back. Wolf, with the Unbreakable Will, defends the mid turret. That is important to note. SKT even out the kill trade one for one. And now they are setting up for Dragon. Yeah, they have the advantage on the Dragon. Huni just heading into the top side. Looks like Fnatic happy just to give this one up. They don't have the death mark available either. So there's not really any way they can, can contest this. They're not going to try. And that's probably the best possible plan. At least Huni can get some more farm in the top side. One to one, as far as dragons are concerned. Marin with the home guard Mercury Treads on his Maokai. See if he can get himself to respond to this heavy initiation style of play that Fnatic are bringing to the table. And there's this 1v1. This is what you asked for, Kobe. Well, I was thinking of face cam, so we can actually see his reaction after he gets the full range shuriken to land on Faker and get another kill. Grinning from ear to ear is Fibibin. I'm sure production will make that happen at some point in the show, <laughs> Kobe, as per your request. Yeah, those solo kills are absolutely huge as well, because that's what's going to power up Fnatic's ability to split push and actually get enough gold to come out ahead in the late game. And, and again, we keep looking at Fnatic. The team that was playing in the group stages simply no longer is on the rift because these guys are all individually performing. Febivin played Zed in the group stages and left a lot to be desired. And now all of a sudden, he's just, he's found his confidence. He's found his sea legs Ooh. and he's showing up. Bang, getting pretty close to that brush. Huni is there. Petrifying Gaze, uh, not going to oh, land this stun. That did not stun at all, but Bang will be forced to Arcane shift and flash away. <laughs> Huni unable to secure the kill, as it's Febivin that's setting up for the top lane tower. You know, uh-oh. Well, Faker's going to be able to dash away thanks to those soldiers. And the tower is going low. Let's see if Yellow Star and Steelback can get any pressure. No, they cannot. Because of the response from SKT, they are really digging deep to defend this outer turret. 
And actually switching Zed up into the lane with Marin. He only has MR right now, so it's a pretty tall order to ask Marin to defend against this. He did go for the home guard. Interestingly, not a normal Marin build that we see again. It's usually uh, picking up that Catalyst, and then the Shroud, and then the Cowl, or Cowl and Shroud. So, a bit of a different strategy, and Fnatic has got a good read on this situation. Yeah, when you have these two high damage solo laners, swapping them around in this 1-3-1 one, uh, one, one, when the Sivir has the wave clear mid, is such a strong mid-game strategy here for Fnatic because they're opposing damage types, and it's getting them outer turrets, stack up that global gold. They can use this lead to actually invade inside the jungle. Now they have the outer ring down. They can start to get the vision. So one left to go. And that's where the picks come in. So this is all going to plan for Fnatic. This is absolutely perfect for their composition. Well, for SKT, they do still have the benefit of scaling on their side. That tree becomes more and more tanky as the game goes on, and Faker and Azir will start to get to a point where those very squishy damage dealers of Fnatic can get heavily poked out by those Arisen soldiers. Can he channel Easy Hood? <laughs> well, not so far, apparently. Not yet. <laughs> yes, Pop he is. Popping off. Is that an American saying? <laughs> I don't know what the kids are saying these yeah. days. <laughs> Well, thank you for that one, Voiboy. <laughs> Ebervin is indeed popping off. Yeah, so I guess yeah. we, again, we have to revisit the substitutions here for SKT, right? When do they when do they feel necessary to bring in Izuhun? And I actually also think that it's kind of sad that they don't have Tom <laughs> here as well. Because the last couple games, you talk about Fnatic being sort of a different team than they were in the group stage. Banky's looked like a different than they did in the group stage. Beverbin wants to cut down a tree, but he's got Yellow Star to help him out. This is a 2v2. Support in mid versus top in jungle. We do see Marin going down, and Beverbin's in retreat. Banky's looking for a prey seeker, but Yellow Star is body blocking and pulling it off. On the hunt coming in from Steelback as the stun lands Oops. on the Bengi, but bang gets himself a kill. He's now on the board of the second one, and Wolf is looking for more. There's a flash. From Steelback, he should have Spell Shield. Oh! He's away, and Wolf does not connect. Steelback gets out alive. It's a trade one for one. And Hooney's pushing the bottom lane. Yeah, they got the trade flash for flash right there at the end, very end. Flash pull not going to land for Biven. Managing to get out of that situation. Bang also still has his true shot barrage, so interesting that he decided not to use that. <laughs> very focused on the true shot barrages. But you know what? There's, that's also why you can do Pulverize Flash and there's no reaction time. Oh, Petrifying A's again does not connect from Hooney. We did see Faker throwing down the passive on the tower. Rainover in full retreat. We did very briefly see that targeting laser from the Azir turret onto Rainover. So I assume that's just a graphical thing that we should be able to resolve. So trading one for one in those kills, though, in the, those, side, those side situations is actually highly preferable for SK Telecom because they relieve the pressure in that situation. There's no more turret chip damage going down, and it prolongs the game until they can get tanky enough to deal with some of these split pushers and actually just force Baron over and over and over again. Uh, the reason why Zed is a, is a pretty, in my opinion, risky pick in this particular meta is that you need to... You need to team fight around Baron. You need to team fight around Dragon to prevent the five stacks coming in. And when you have Zed, you have to have such a big, big lead because he has to one shot somebody in a team fight. If he fails to one shot somebody in a team fight, he's not actually particularly useful. And you need that means you need a big, big gold lead to do that. And uh, so it's is, is this enough of a gold lead, Monty? You're looking at around 4K, 201, a CS advantage, towers are down. Is it getting there? It's getting there for sure. Yeah, time is definitely running out. I definitely agree with you, and it's even more so in this game because Maokai is such a great counter to melee uh, AD champions because if you can't get in and one-shot somebody, you can't get back out either. The targeted snare is so good against champions like Zed, like Talon, these melee carries. And not to mention, I mean, once the Hourglass is finished onto Azir also, that creates even more problems for target selection. And with all the with all the hourglass and tankiness right now, Zed in the late game, his targets go. You just start to fall off one by one. The QSS, and then we, you know, you have the the hourglasses, and then who are you going to target? Basically, 
you can't target Alistair. You can't target an Ezreal with QSS. There's literally nobody to death mark. On the assumption that is all playing out, Huni could theoretically hit a petrifying gaze. He's not done it the last two times we've seen it being cast, so we'll have to see if he can bring himself back up. But you know, time, again, is what SKT are looking for. They need to use that true shot barrage to defend, use the soldiers from Azir, and stall out till they're tanky enough to deal with it. But even if you hit the Petrifying Gaze, the beauty of the Alistair pick in this particular situation is that you just pop the ult, and then you punt Cassiopeia out of the fight, <laughs> right? It's, it's one of the best anti-Cassiopeia picks you can have. I definitely agree, and that's why we really have to re-emphasize the precision point for Fnatic. They have some tools, like the Gragas Ultimate and the Sivir Speed Boost, if they can get the split that they need and try and disrupt the battle lines, that's their hope. Their hope is to you know, make that small opening and jump on it. Well, I did get confirmation from production really quickly. It was the visual bug from that Azir turret. Players are restarting their clients and getting themselves back into the game. I'll keep you updated if anything changes. As per rules, not allowed to talk during the pause. So, you see it's, the players sitting using Morse code. Chatting away. <laughs> Don't start that. Hard. Don't start that. It's hard to make it out <laughs> with this audience, though. <laughs> They're fired up. Well, I think it's fair to say very few people expected Fnatic to perform at this level in this series. I was not one of them. I did not think you they weren't would one be... of them that wouldn't think. Uh, don't give double me double <laughs> right, me I did not think Fnatic would be going toe to toe with SKT as they are right now. I didn't think Fnatic would be doing this well in this tournament. I mean, if we look at their run through the EU playoffs, it was considerably sloppier than what we've seen them bring here. This is a level of precision from Fnatic that I didn't think they had in them. Yeah, you can you can say yes. We know what Fnatic will do all day long. But if you aren't in place and you aren't able to execute in game, these plays come so quickly from Fnatic and they're so crisp right now that they're still working. Yeah, they absolutely are. High risk, high reward style of play. On the assumption they find those picks, they lead to towers and objectives. On the assumption they don't, then obviously things go completely awry. Uh, just again, another update, guys. We are in fact restarting the SKT clients as well. It's the additional delay, so hopefully we should get back shortly. I can see a few of the players slowly starting to trickle back into the server. 20 minutes, 10 seconds on the clock. SKT, Monty, some uncharacteristic misplays, a few small mistakes. Game two, much more now than game three. We saw the same out of GE Tigers at Intel Extreme Masters, which is something that nobody really expected going into the tournament. I mean. SKT, uh, we saw some we saw some sloppy play from them in the playoffs as well, especially in the CJ series. So I, I guess I'm not too too surprised by this. Um, but they have shown that they can really pull it together when everything's on the line. They're not a team that really buckles has buckles under pressure or anything like that. So what's the trigger to bring Easy Hoon in? I don't know. If at all, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think that they probably will stick with Faker, uh, depending on his. Depending on his performance, I mean, after this one, maybe you say, well, if we're going to go for Azir, we're going to go, we're going to leave this Cassiopeia unbanned. Because remember, coming in, SK Telecom were the ones banning Cassiopeia. So they can really kind of turn this matchup around and try and get both of those unbanned and, and Easy Hoon on one or Easy Hoon on Vladimir. And we may see a very different kind of game. Uh, maybe if they feel the need to ban the LeBlanc, you know, after Fibivin had that great LeBlanc game, then they can just sub in Easy Hoon and they're like, you know what, we would ban LeBlanc anyway. Yeah. So, we've heard some theory, we are back in game. Remind everybody, SKT versus Fnatic. Number one seed from groups versus the number four seed. Head to head in the series, one to one. And SKT find themselves 3,000 gold down, reeling under Fnatic's aggressive plays. You know, something that I actually overestimated uh, which actually sometimes I do a lot with jungle, <laughs> where the, uh, the jungle bans. Um, Bangi's been getting Rek'Sai over and over, uh, but Rainover, I've been so impressed with Rainover, especially the early game. Uh, he's been doing really well with this Gragas, keeping up and actually surpassing Bangi in this one within, with map control. The early Sightstone and that early setup for the picks was, there was a very small timing window to make that happen and get into the red side jungle and get the vision down. 
and he jumped on the opportunity. He's, he's had a lot of control for Fnatic. I think there's also a lot to be said about Rainover's uh, growth in his jungle patterns against Bengi and SKT in comparison to yesterday's match. Monty, we were talking uh, in prep for this series about how Rainover just seemed lost when Bengi was playing the Nunu, and yet yeah. he didn't know how to read him. In this game in particular, Bengi has been unable to make plays through other members of Fnatic, but Rainover's got multiple flashes, multiple ganks in the early phases, the first five, ten minutes. Yeah, I, I think that he's definitely shown up today. And talking about junglers, too, given the, how this tournament has played out, I kind of want to go back to Kobe's questions about Tom, which is SK Telecom's substitute jungler. Given that this has been a very scrappy, mechanical tournament, you have to wonder if Tom was really the better pick here. Yeah, Tom isn't as, as I think, he doesn't have the same foresight that Bengi does, but he is very reactive. His and reactions he, are instant. Yeah, and he really likes to fight early on. So against this group of teams, uh, there was a possibility that they could have run with Tom, but also Tom has had some quite poor games at times, too. He does play a, a higher risk style of jungling, but when everyone's fighting all the time, I honestly think you'd rather have Tom. And hindsight being 20-20, Nobody would have thought it was going to be SKT versus Fnatic in the semi-final. Well, and, well <laughs> this chaotic style was under, like, written off by so many people. Even myself and Fisher were going, how will it go? We're like, well, we're, we're secretly, quietly hopeful that the aggression will pay off, but it's so, so risky and it backfires so frequently. Yeah, I think, I, I, I just, I wouldn't gamble on it every time, but... <laughs> Well, Fnatic sure are. Oh, that's for well, sure. They, well, they <laughs> their coach is a professional gambler, Monty. <laughs> <laughs> former, former poker professional, I will have you know. Now an upstanding coach, according to Reddit, one of the best in Europe. Definitely leading Fnatic the way the team needs to be led. You know, you see the growth in their play style. All right, guys, while the players on stage are looking into this matter, we will be heading over to the analyst desk to help us chat more about the matchup. Thank you, gentlemen, and guys, we're with you on this. We're excited to get back in the game as soon as humanly possible, but until that point, we get a bit of a moment to break down the game midway through, and I do have to say again, pointing towards that mid lane, you know, Febivin, after a questionable first game, just as Voidboy put it, popping off here in game three. <laughs> we, we thought of the weaknesses that Fnatic had going into this, but I am absolutely loving how they're playing to their strength, completely unfazed by what SKT has to bring. Zed's not viable in Korea, it's viable in Europe. They're pulling it out, getting solo kills against Faker, help Steelback make it out of lane, and then the games is going so well for them. We have such an exciting match on our hand. Really, the cards are not over and not given right now. I think that, you know, whatever. All right, I got to interrupt you because just like that, we're ready to get back <laughs> in the happy. game. I'm exactly. happy. So Let's I go. knew you'd be happy to hear that. We're going to toss it right back over to the guys to get us into it. All right, welcome back to Tallahassee, Florida, where we are in the third game of the first semifinal, the Mid-Season Invitational. I am quietly hopeful that this will work out. Sheepy obviously happy as the only Analyst Desk member to predict a Fnatic win. As it looks like Fnatic have control, however, it is still very early in this third game. Yeah, honestly, they should have control in this stage of the game. Yeah, it's pretty expected at this stage that they would have it, but we'll see how this next Dragon fight goes, if SK Telecom wants to commit to it, or if they're going to be happy maybe giving this one up. Double Blade Zed does have a decent amount of vision coverage. Split pushing already while the dragon's up. Oh, here comes the teleport. They do want to defend it. Well, it looks like Fnatic's low. Fight. Marin's coming in from the side. Rain of it does get the barrel. Now, dragon secured by SKT. That was the second as Fnatic are looking for the team fight. They do have crab control, which means extra speed as well as civis speed. Featherfit as well as Hooney. Double team Where's to take Hooney? down Bengi. Now, Hooney's on the sideline. Poison ticking away onto Wolf. That unbreakable will is breakable by Featherfit. Yellow Star flashes over. He gets the slow, but the Petrifying Gaze gets nothing and nada. Fnatic lose Dragon, get two, and turn for a tower. But they have the wave right there on the mid lane turret, so they will be able to take a tier two. Almost certainly right here. True shot barrage down, no <laughs> way to clear out that wave. It may be oh, close. Oh, Rainover's in trouble, and he just gets bounced all over the lane. The tower survives, and SKT get themselves a kill and reply. Oh, close right there. Good defense by SKT. Faker managing to get over the wall and hit the Emperor's Divide and helping to clear out that wave. So, see what Marin just going to head topside at least for the moment. And 
just split push a little bit. Let's take a look at that fight again. I mean, yeah. Looking at the knockups, I imagine. Yeah, Faker making a case for himself to stay in this series. <laughs> Snare set up there from Marin. And Randover takes a ride. No, Randover can fly. Also, just great zoning from those Sand Soldiers as well. One in front, one to the side, making sure that no one could walk up while the play was being made. Just like that, all the goodwill of the team fight from Fnatic squandered or outplayed by SKT. They get the first tower yeah. of the game. They are still a few thousand gold down, but there'll be a lot of free time on this tower. In fact, Febbervin's just going to look for the kill. Bang will secure it. Febbervin unable to defend. Yeah, and keep in mind, with the tower discrepancy, you know, some of this gold can easily be taken back by SKT. So they get a pretty good chunk of it there. One more left in mid. The outer turrets are pretty easy to knock over. And they can try and claw back into this one. They do need to set up more defensive wards, though. Ticking time bomb slowly getting scarier for Fnatic. Frozen Heart picked up from Marin, so producing some of the threat from Febbervent and Steelback. Still needs some more MR on the side of SKT to help deal with Huni, but let's also be honest, Huni's not hitting those petrifying gazes. We've seen multiple in a row now, just not finding the mark. Bang is going for a poor man's build here with pieces of swords. <laughs> Got the cutlass. He's, he's going for all the poor man's builds today, Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> so he will be a rich man in 20 minutes. <laughs> Which is funny because he actually was the one who started out with 2-0-0 zero, and zero on this team. So picking up the kills and uh, staying even in farm as well in that lane swap, but not really getting a whole lot right here. And CDR boots? Gotta get that. I'm just gonna leave that hanging. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tell me more, Kobe. What is your opinion of well, your boots on AD Ezreal? You can get more attack speed by firing off more spells with Ezreal. Oh boy, <laughs> Fnatic just going for the Baron. Pings wildly coming in from SK Telecom, and they're gonna back off. It's a nice try, though. You have the Zed, you have the Cassiopeia. Might as well make an attempt. One of the advantages of running the more risky, precision-based team comps that have more damage, you can put a lot of pressure on those neutral objectives because you can take it so quickly. Even though Cassiopeia is at half mana, you'd really like to get her a blue buff before you do that. No teleports for either top lane, and we did see Febbervin shoving out the bottom wave, but he's now moving in the jungle. Yeah, they have plenty of wards there to see exactly what uh, Febbervin's doing, so he's not really going to be able to get an angle onto this fight coming up. Marin actually going to abandon it now. The split push isn't going on. They may want to try and create a pick right here or get a 5v5. Now, oh, Febbervin is in lane. Push out that way. Fnatic going full EU and starting the Baron Dance. Febbervin gets poked down by the Conquering Sands. And now Fake is starting to come into his own. Hourglass almost completed. Look at that tower. It is shredded. And SKT, even out the tower kills, it's a 2,000 gold difference. And Faker, he wants blood. He jumps onto Febbervin. And they're just going to go for a continued siege right now. They want to break up this, uh, this split pushing that's happening. They have a slow push developing in the bottom side as well that's going to have to be dealt with. Oh, they're going to back off. So... Fnatic also have to do a better job of coordinating their wave clear. Gragas off to the side. Zed actually used his combo for harass rather than going for minions there and made it very easy for SKT to knock down that last outer we were saying was easy gold for them. So, poor man's build starting to come into effect. Muramana complete now. And also that Blade of the Ruined King, so that'll give him a little bit of extra survivability. And the Hourglass for Faker just a few yeah, seconds sir. ago. Big sure. item spikes yeah. with a not big enough gold lead for Fnatic. Yeah, crucial items. Is he going to turn the Sheen into the Trinity Force or actually an Iceborne Gauntlet? I would go, go Gauntlet and here. And go for the super annoying Permaslow with these cooldown reduction builds to try and kite Zed. It's not only kiting Zed, but Cassiopeia as well. Uh, Cassio won't be able to close that gap, and they have so many short-range champions here. The Sivir, too, uh, would be affected by that. So I think you just go full tank here. i kind of like to see an early Quicksilver Sash on him, though. Right now, he's got a decent amount of damage output. Uh, Quicksilver Sash, it would double for Zed and for Cassiopeia, as well as if you get hit by one of those Yellow Star really long-range solar flares that's just looking to pick somebody off from a very long distance. All right, big wave in the top side. 
for SKT to deal with as this dragon's going to spawn in a few seconds. Fevin looking for a turret here in bottom. Will oh. SKT make a TP, TP play? The thing, other thing about SKT's mid push is they were able to clear out most of the vision for Fnatic. Yeah, there have been wards at the bottom side for a while, so it's been dangerous for Zed to split. Here we go! Yellow Star and Rainover coming in from the back line. Marin was teleporting into the pit, but Fevivin's in trouble. He's not going to oh. get the kill, and that's a shutdown from Bang. SKT with a great start to the fight. Double kill for Bang as Petrifying Gaze does nothing. SKT, two kills on the board. They turn their attention now you can to the middle bear. lane, and what an easy team fight. Fnatic did not find their targets. This is why these comps are so risky because SKT, there are so many ways for them to win this game, but there's really only one for Fnatic, and so that's going to be a Baron. Dragon will go over to Fnatic and it gets something for it, but this gold lead is going to vanish, and the very scary Ezreal Azir Siege is going to hit the turrets. Precision, precision, precision. Fnatic were not able to focus down either of their main DPS targets. The Azir and the Ezreal Bang was able to kite very easily. The Blade of the Ruined King active also, he was able to heal with. And there's your QSS coming. Now he's got QSS on top of it. He's... <laughs> Now, well, Febivin will be relegated to side lanes if those items are telling us anything. We'll see whether or not Fnatic can show some map play as opposed to just pick-based play. And it looked like Bang wants to go Trinity Force. Here's that uh, team fight once more. Yeah, just coming in here, I mean, Bang does have to flash out of the way right there, but Febivin gets focused by Faker and Bang. There's a true shot barrage that just takes him out. His kiting, there's no more damage to deal with him, really, while Wolf and Marin are just absolutely denying on the side. Wolf in here, the bouncer at the end, keeps both Steelback and Huni out of the fight for the duration of his ultimate. And as soon as his ultimate wears off, tag team with Marin. Okay, your turn to tank now. I'm out of here. What a fantastic pickup for Wolf. It was the very last lock-in for SKT, and that Alistair is just doing so much work. SKT, even on gold, but that will change shortly as they look to secure their fourth tower of the game. Fnatic up not to defend while they simply can't. And SKT looking for their second, and just like that, SK Telecom now in control. Uh, they're still moving forward right here. They absolutely can dive these turrets as well. If they don't want to just zone and poke off, they do have the Righteous Glory on their top lane, Maokai, as they press into the base right here. And it's, it's hard, because even if you can get... How do you get onto the back line right now if you're Fnatic? One of the big issues is the Azir passive covering your flanks. Um, so there's not... You can't kind of ninja your way around the side and hope to one-shot somebody, really. Siege tank's complete for SKT. <laughs> They've got the front line. <laughs> They've got the power to back it up. Well, SKT now are strangling the life out of Fnatic. Got themselves a number of quick towers in succession. Baron, about 75% of the time has been used. And they're just going to keep shoving these waves out, setting their sights on that top inner turret as the last remaining one before they opt to take down the inhibitor turrets. Now, there is a fair amount of wave clear on Fnatic's side if they can stall the game out on the inhibitor. Yeah, if they use it for wave clear. They were using Gragas barrels on the side for harass, Zed combos for harass. Yeah, Trinity Force now done for Bang also, so he is... Not going to be going for the Iceborne. Instead, feel safe enough with that QSS, and I think they have enough tankiness that... Tons the, of damage. ...will be A-OK, -okay. <laughs> and he does have the tons of damage now. <laughs> I'm shaking my no, head at you, Kobe. I, I, I can see you. <laughs> Hello. But nobody else can. I'm letting them know I'm shaking my head at you. So, SKT, when you see Wolf knocking away Rainover, as Bengi jumps in, secures the blue buff. Need to see Large Rod as well as Hourglass and Morella Nomicon for Faker looking for the burst. We saw Easy Hoon go uh, Luden's Echo yesterday. Oh, we had a chat about that. Yeah, I think it's really bad. <laughs> yeah. But the wave clear, boys. <laughs> okay, they're shaking what their heads at me, right? They're shaking their heads at me. <laughs> it will be a death cap for Faker, not the Luden's Echo. <laughs> and Febivin trying to set something up. The game is stalled out. SKT playing it safe. And outside of that blue steel, 
maybe waiting for a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> so much for Fnatic, Bush. <laughs> that minion got too close. <laughs> they start picking him immediately. Well, is he still stuff. in there? No, no he's he's actually, he moved back. All right, all right, he moved. He's back. making s'mores. It's been a long day, gentlemen. We do oh, see Hootie. Hootie. He's in trouble. In a very dangerous position right now. They don't have uh, vision to really make that kind of play. And he's going to try and flash bang, just turns his back. and That did not work out for Hooney. He's going to put the shield down, but it will be bang. That goes unstoppable. 5-0-1. Hooney way out of position. Now Morin, he's going to jump onto Reyna. Reyna was already flashed. Steel back holding onto On the Hunt. Here comes Febivan trying to put some damage down on the Hunt in reply, but it's a 4 versus 5 at best. Faker gets himself a kill. That's his first of the game as Yellowstar forced to flash in defense. SKT punish Fnatic for being out of position. And they look to secure their first inhibitor turret of the game. When it rains, it pours. Hooney gets caught out, then rain over. Long walk back. Belly slam into the wall there. And he goes down as well. Inhibitor for SKT. Floodgates have opened, Monty. Yeah, the floodgates have indeed opened. And they've got to drag it up in 40 seconds. SK Telecom looks like it's likely, they are likely to be able to get there in time. And then perhaps transition over to that Baron. There's the Void Rush coming in. Is Bang Bangy going to die here is the well, question. Let's find out. That's a lot of damage. The burst comes out. The boomerang secures it. It's the form alarm to get far. <laughs> Interesting decision right there. Uh, he, uh, he wanted to set up on the map, but uh, Marin's still in the top side, and they had actually plenty of time right there, so a bit of a terrible, terrible <laughs> Void Rush. <laughs> Fnatic with a numbers advantage now set themselves up for Dragon. Looks like SKT are around. Could a true shot barrage steal? Hey. No, it cannot. Good combo with the Mystic Shot. Almost tagged it. Still. Fnatic get their third Dragon. We're still a while away from any threat of five Dragons, which may be Fnatic's only hope. Because they can't deal with the Siege. They can't deal with the Wave Clear. And they got those three outer turrets within 20 minutes of the game. And since then, it's been all about the Koreans. They can take a lot if SKT get a little sloppy here and, you know, walk towards one of those brush where they don't have vision. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, indeed. Hooney looks like he's going down. The red buff is ticking away. <laughs> and Bang is dominating. Bang With is this sweat, cool guys don't look at explosions, Peel. <laughs> Bang has been so good in playing against the petrifying gaze. Yeah. His mechanics are crazy when trying to dodge that one, turning his back at the perfect time multiple times this game, and a great read on the 1v1. Here comes Fabivin, though. Well, we do see the death mark. I think oh. that was used a little early. Will the pop? Oh, we do see in the background. It's going to be Fabivin taken down. Rainover gets knocked up by Bengi. Steelback is trying to do what he can. Solar Flare comes down, but it's three versus four. And the True Shot Barrage tags two. Rainover gets it's a small heel as he tries to get away. Multiple knockbacks, knock ups, knock everywhere, and knock down onto Steelback. SKT with four members of Fnatic dead. Super minions in the middle lane. They are setting up on the top lane. They want more. Yeah, they're going in right now. I think they'll just take the inhibitor and then back off. They can always go back and get the Baron later on. No need to push that advantage. Well, Faker says otherwise. <laughs> okay. He right. wants Hooney. He takes him down. <laughs> Yellowstar, the lone member standing. I think Faker had something to prove after that previous game. <laughs> and that felt personal. 14 to 9, 7,000 gold in the lead. Only Feathervin and Yellowstar standing. SKT are knocking on the Nexus. This is going to be 2 1. And Faker at 5 2 5 takes the series 2 1. I love games like this. My favorite kind of League of Legends games are the ones in which Koreans win. Ah, I mean, <laughs> ah, did too easy. Ah, too uh, easy. Well, no, but really, uh, I really like it when we see such different strategies in terms of team compositions because you can really sink your teeth into the game in terms of analysis and talk about what each team really has to do to win. And we saw how well Fnatic did in the early game, but it's that power coming in. And if you can't close quickly or get that massive lead, it can be very difficult to come back. Yeah, SKT keeping their veterans in with the confidence to play more scaling, with the confidence to embrace that tank line and wait for it. Five minutes now, the countdown to decide if they stick with Faker or Easy Hoon. Two one up, and despite a few scares, SKT still in control. Despite falling behind, you never felt like they were at risk 
of losing the game. Fnatic were putting the pieces together. They needed to find a few more weapons in their arsenal. So we'll see how this turns out. We're going to go to game four in just a moment or two's time. But for now, we're going to throw over to the analyst.